morning, Biz 102 meteorologist and Louie here. This is Biz 102 weather forecast. Today we have a special segment prepared for this week as we have thunderstorms all week, day to night. Let's just get right into it. Meteorologist Anne Bowie here. Today we'll be discussing the formation of thunderstorms. Let's start off with the basics, the developing stage. So, the presence of cumulonimbus clouds, aka thunderclouds, is usually your best indicator of this phase. This occurs due to the updrafts, which is the upward flow of gas. Warm and moist air travels upward at a rapid pace due to its lighter density compared to the cooler air situated, situated higher in the atmosphere. This process is known as convection. Next, we have the mature stage. This is when precipitation starts. The air from the updrafts will gather water droplets and ice crystals. Due to the lower temperatures in the thundercloud, thunderclouds, while downdrafts, which is the downward flow of air, will bring down soft hail at the same time. These molecules will collide with each other, creating a separation of charges. During these collisions, electrons from water droplets and ice crystals will transfer to the hail. Thus, the updrafts gather positive charges, while the downdrafts gather the negative charges. The top of the thundercloud is positively charged, while the bottom is negatively charged. An electric field is produced due to this um, separation of electrostatic charges, and the strength of the field can be determined by the strength of the attraction. I will talk about cloud to ground. Basically, the electrical field produced between the sky and the ground is what creates the lightning that we see in the sky. As you can see, at the bottom of the cloud, we see the negative charges, and then the ground has its positive charges. The air between them is an insulator. But then, once the charges are strong enough to overcome that insulator, it becomes polarized and becomes plasma. And like that, the charges from the sky will want to go to the ground. Cloud to cloud lightning is formed due to the interaction between two or more separate clouds. One cloud is negatively charged and the other is positively charged and they attract each other, uh, creating lightning. This is, however, not as common as cloud to ground. Cloud to cloud, since it occurs within clouds, are not visible usually to people on land and therefore only poses a danger to aircrafts. Cloud to cloud can also happen within a cloud and within the same cloud between optically charged regions. This is a more frequent type of lightning. Cloud to air formation of lightning occurs when an electrical discharge jumps from cloud to air. The air is a good insulator because the air is gaseous and therefore the molecules are more spread apart and they will not hold or transfer energy well. Since air acts as an insulator, the cl when cloud to ground lightning occurs, it could stop abruptly in the air which causes cloud to air lightning to form. So, how do those charges connect? That's a very good question. Um, like I said previously, the dipoles become very large and the insulator in the air breaks down. Basically, the electrons, called the slept leaders, are more free to move in the air. So they will move in 50 meters in length and seek positive charges or just die out. They don't really have a predictable movement. And then we also have the protons on the ground. They're called the streamers and they want negative charges. They're often on tall or sharp objects. And so once the electron, the set leader, and then the proton, the streamer, encounter each other, boom, the attachment process begins. So it's basically neutralization. Uh, the negative charges will flow down, and the streamers will shoot up. And that shooting up is called the return stroke. This return stroke is actually more powerful than the electrons coming down. It goes, from, it goes to 2 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Once it happens, it, there's going to be heat created, the air explodes, there's compression, and there's a sound wave that comes out, and that's the thunder that we hear. And that's how lightning is created. A way to protect you and your family from lightning is by placing two lightning rods at the, beside your house as the, it's also connected by a wire to the ground. This way, as the lightning strikes, it will strike the rod rather than your house. The rod is connect conductive as it is made of copper and therefore as the lightning hits the rod, the charges will go, especially the electrons, will go down through the rod and into the ground. This way it will protect your house from getting hit by lightning. Another reason why is because the lightning is more attracted to sharper objects and therefore as the lightning strikes it will go down through the rod.